God is good. Amen. Amen. And uh, it is. It is a, a blessing to be here again. Uh, last time I was here, my family was, was with us, weren't they? Okay. I just want to make sure because uh, it has been a while. We've, uh, it's been about a year and a half since we've been back in the States. And actually, they send their love. My wife and son send their love and greetings. My son's still in school, so he couldn't come. Uh, Y'all know how, how, how that is to kind of get away if you have kids, especially when they're in school. But they send their love. Doing well. And um, just so glad to be here this morning. Uh, I've been back in the States now for not quite a week, uh, almost a week. And it's been a good trip so far. Just uh, had a chance to, to visit with a, a few folks up towards uh, Rock Hill, Charleston, I mean, um, Charlotte area. And uh, now here in this place is a blessing. Amen? And I enjoyed the worship this morning. I really enjoyed the worship. That was, that was a blessing. I mean, it was a blessing. Praise God. You know, down in Peru, we speak Spanish. and My wife is from Peru, so she speaks a lot of Spanish. And when we first got married, it was, you know, I, I, I could claim ignorance. I didn't understand what she was saying, but now I can't claim ignorance. So when she yells at me, I'm just playing. Um, but we worship the Lord in Spanish. But you know, whether you worship the Lord in Spanish or in English or in French, as perhaps my, my brothers here might, you know, it's, 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 we all worship one God. And we have, it's all the same spirit. And it's a blessing being in a house where the same spirit moves. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Well, as Pastor was saying, um, I've been in Peru now for, for a while. I've been there for about almost 15 years. It'll be 15 years in January. And I, I can say that God is faithful. I went to Peru, a young man, single, um, with two suitcases. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, um, the Lord's blessed me, given me a beautiful wife, got a wonderful son. He's now 12. He's about yay tall. He's pretty big and getting bigger. Uh, he's finishing up the sixth grade. And we now have actually two churches going. We started one about over 11 years ago. And in this year and a half since we've been here, we started another church. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to share a, bit, a, a little bit about that. And uh, we've just seen the hand of God. I can, I can honestly say that in those 15 years, things may have been tight sometimes, but we've never gone hungry. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, um, you know, I, 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 want, I want to encourage everybody here today. Um, serving God is never a loss. I mean, we cannot lose when we serve the Lord. Um, the Bible says, um, they that persevere until the end shall be saved. And we have to endure. We have to persevere. But it's never a loss. We always have so much more to gain than what we may have to give up. So there might be somebody here today that's kind of, you know, on the fence, not quite sure if they want to go all the way with God. Look, go all the way. There is nothing, there is nothing, trust me, there is nothing worth holding on to to not give up to follow the Lord. Nothing. Amen? Amen. Praise God. This morning, before we get started in the Word, um, I want to share a couple things of what God's been doing. You know, when we were here last, I shared about our need for a vehicle. Uh, we've been driving. I've been driving. My wife doesn't drive. Um, she tells me how to drive, though. She doesn't drive. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, she can't drive. Doesn't know how. But, uh, but, but, but tells me how to do it. So, it, it, is, it, is that universal or what? <laughs> um. But we've been driving an old car for a long time, and that, that car was, uh, I mean, old, uh, really old, and uh, li just went, it used up a lot of gasoline and a lot of faith, okay? It took a lot of faith to get where we were going. Uh, we had to resurrect it several times, and we did, and the Lord, the Lord faithfully raised, raised it up several times, and uh, several times I had to push it through rush hour traffic in the city of Lima, which is a city of 10 million people, so you can imagine what the traffic might be like. And here I am, one of the only uh, foreigners or white guys in the middle of the traffic pushing this car, this old car. People looking at you kind of like, what in the world? And I'm just saying, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Preaching the gospel, living by faith and believing God for a new vehicle. I was believing God for 10 years for a new vehicle. But let me tell you something. A um, year and a half ago, after we got back to Peru, the Lord did it. The Lord did it. <laughs> Y'all prayed for us. I know y'all helped us. Y'all prayed for us. And the Lord did it. He blessed us with a brand new vehicle. We brought a, a, a four-wheel drive SUV, which we were believing God for. It's a Chevrolet model. And uh, it, it, it was such a blessing and just the right time 
because our heart was to start a, a, a new church, but for that we had to have a, a vehicle that would get us there because we were looking at a place about two hours uh, from where our, our city is, two hours south, um, a town called Cañete, which is on the coast of Peru. Uh, and our old car would not go. It, 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 there was no way it was going to get there. And we have to take people, we have to take our, our uh, leaders and our team uh, and supplies and equipment. And so we needed someone that could get there and get the job done. We got back and the Lord blessed us. You know, I, I, we couldn't even explain how it happened because we never had that much money in our lives, but we paid cash for it, man. That's God. And my wife and I are both like, how in the world did this happen? I said, I don't know, but thank God. It, he's faithful. You know, we just knew it was time. We, and the Lord led us to a, 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 a car dealership, and the lady that attended us actually was a Christian. And, uh, you know, they had this big SUV, four-wheel drive out front, but in my mind, I didn't even want to look at it. I thought, I don't even, I don't even want to look at how much that thing cost. I was looking at a smaller model or something that we could, you know, we could afford. And um, finally, the sales lady was like, well, you're kind of tall. You, you, want, you sure you don't want to look at that, at that big one out there? I'm like, no, no it's okay. Don't, I don't want you know, I don't want to go there. And, uh, but then finally, I'm like, well, well, how much is it? She said, well, right now it's, you know, it's about 48000 But tomorrow it's going to be on sale. I'm like, really? Yeah, from 48, it's going to be down to 28. 28? Really? Now, we didn't even have all that money, to be honest. We didn't. We were, we were you know, scraping together all that we had. We were still short. But we had enough to put the down, put a little bit more than, than, than a half on it. And uh, we just felt in our heart that that's what we need to do. So we, we prayed about it over the weekend. This was on a Friday, I believe. Uh, or uh, Thursday or Friday, and when we came back, the next, and she, but she said, now, but we only have 10 of these models, because it had been left over from a previous year, so it was, you know, stock they're trying to get rid of, that's why it was, on, it was on sale, but zero miles, and, um, and uh, they said, we only have 10, 10 of them in stock, I'm like, okay, so when we came back a couple days later, said, we want to make the deal, they'd already sold seven of them, and of those, uh, of the three they had left, they only had, they, the one that we bought was blue, and my son had been, had been praying for a blue one, so, so I said, well, sounds like you got what, what you've been praying for. And um, we gave them the, the money down, believe God. Within a week, the rest came. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. So we took care of that. God is faithful. And we've been putting some miles on it, man. I mean, it's awesome having a four-wheel drive. You can get anywhere you want to go. And uh, my wife still tells me how to drive it, though. So she t- still tells me how to drive. So. But, uh, but, but, but she's enjoying it a lot more because I don't have to push it anymore. And it has an air conditioner. And it, and it has a radio. <laughs> Our last car didn't have a radio. If we, if we wanted music, we had to sing. But we sang a lot in that car. <laughs> so um, I remember when we were looking at cars, my, my son, he had ridden with one of his friends in school, and he came back excited. He said, he said Dad, he said, their car actually has a CD player in it. <laughs> and it has air conditioning, too. And he thought that was the greatest thing in the world. So now ours has a CD player, too. Praise God. God is faithful. So we got a new vehicle. Amen. We will. Well, we have. And, um, and, and, and so we got the new vehicle. And then the reason why we really wanted a new vehicle was to start the, the, a new church. And we did by the grace of God. We, um, we, we, had a, we had a couple of families in this particular area that we were working at, uh, looking at starting a church. And we began having uh, home meetings there every Friday night. Did that for about six months. And um, people began to come. The, the place began to fill up. And then we transitioned to a building. Uh, at, we left someone, we, we came out of their house and uh, rented, us, rented a facility. And the building was in rough shape, but man, our, our, our team, our people from uh, Lima, they're like, they're like ants, man. They, 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 just, they just love to work and they love to serve God. And, and they're such, some of the most given people. And um, they said, well, we're going to do it. And so they got on board and we got the facility. We were able to upfit the facility, uh, paint it, install the lights. Uh, get the chairs, get, well, we, we took our, our, some of our sound equipment from the, the, the main church down there, and now we've been rotating our teams. The Lord put our heart to, that this new church is going to be more like a training base where our team, our, our, our members who have grown up over the past, you know, 11 years that they've been with us, that they've been discipled, they've been, they've been developed, they've, they've grown, now it's time for them to go do the work. And uh, as a matter of fact, now, for the first year and a half, it was me and my wife every single week. I mean, every week going down there. And our team would rotate. So, you know, they would, there would always be someone else different with us from, from our, our leaders um, to work with the kids or work with the youth or, you know, to help out with the setup 
everything, the, the, the music. We believe in worshiping God. Um, but for the, so the, the first year and a half, it was her and I, just every week, and my son. He's like, Dad, do I have to do it again? Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> son, this is, what, this is what God's called us to do. You're part of the team. Okay, I'm part of the team. So he's, he's our little helper there, you know. He, he, he runs the uh, sound equipment, the uh, projection and everything. And uh, actually, he's been learning how to mix his own music and do his own beats. He downloaded, I didn't like that he downloaded this, uh, pro, but he downloaded a, a, a program because uh, it can get viruses that way. But he downloaded a program, got on YouTube, and taught himself how to use the program, and is making beats, man. He's like, wow. So it, he was praying for a, a blue SUV. He got that. Now he's praying for a DJ turntable, so y'all keep that in prayer too. <laughs> he wants that to, and he actually told our worship team. Now he's 12 years old, so he's got a lot of faith. And uh, he told our worship team, he said, I'm going to replace all of y'all with my computer. I said, son, that's a pretty bold statement, but if you want to, go for it, but you're going to have to do it with excellence. You got, I mean, if, go for it. And so he, he's determined he's going to replace all of them with his, with his, with his computer, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, so, um, but then after about a year and a half of going there every single week, every single week, um, then we were able to kind of hand it off to our team. And I'm not even there now uh, going um, because I'm here, obviously. <laughs> but my wife's not going because she can't drive, so she had to stay in Lima. But our team's still going down there. And we just had one of our disciples, a young guy named John. I'm so proud of this guy. He's about, you know, that tall. And um, John, when he came to us about nine years ago, was a gang member. Uh, his mother actually got saved first, and she came, and we taught her how to pray, how to intercede for her family because her, her husband was kind of like a drunk. Her daughter was way out there, too. And her son was a gang member, but we taught her how to pray and believe God. And um, her name is Sylvia. And so Sylvia prayed her family into the kingdom. Thank God for people that can pray. Well, John was a gang member, but when he came, came to the Lord, I mean, he bowed his knees and he received Christ in his heart. The Lord began a transformation. He helped John finish his schooling. Then he, he went to trade school, uh, helped him get a good job. He uh, got married to a good girl, beautiful girl. They have, a, they have a, a, a one-year-old son now. John plays the drums on our worship team. He's working with the youth. And uh, as a matter of fact, this past week, he preached his very first sermon at the new church in Cañete. So what God put in our heart as far as having a training base where the, our team can go and, you know, they can use the gifts that God's given them. It's coming to pass. And uh, while I'm not there, he's going to be sharing a couple times. We have a couple other leaders that are going to be ministering as well. And the people from that area... Uh, it's a, it's a, more like a, a rural setting. So a lot of farmers and people that work in the fields and stuff. Um, but they, they have a hunger for the word. And we, all, we had four people from that, from that new church uh, get baptized about uh, three or four weeks ago. So we're just thankful for what the Lord's doing. <laughs> Amen. So we started the, the new church. There's a lot that's happened in the past year and a half. Uh, got a new vehicle. Got a new church going. And that new church has grown to about probably 35 or maybe 40 members. Um, consistent. Somewhere around there. Um, a lot of kids. A lot of children. Um, back in this, this past year, back in February, uh, last year, we had, or was it the start of this year? We had a vac vacation Bible school. And we had around four or 500 children from the neighborhood come, come through there. And a lot of them get their lives to the Lord. That was awesome because, you know, our, our new facility is about maybe half the width of this and about, about as long maybe. And so uh, I've been trying to pack four or 500 kids in there. They weren't all there at once. They, they kind of rotated throughout the week. But still, we'd have a, you know, on a given day, we'd have 100 kids in that facility. And the very last day, we had a party, and the, the neighbors came, and everybody was packed in there, and we shared Christ. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. When it's all said and done, you know, do you know the Lord? Whether you live in Peru, uh, Australia, the United States, China, do you know Jesus? Amen. Amen. Please keep the new work in, in prayer, y'all. Uh, like I said, we're not there. I'm not overseeing it. I'm, I've put faith uh, in, our, in our leadership because they're at the place where they have to step forward. They have to run with it, and they're capable. And so um, I'm just trusting the Lord. They're going to do a good job. When I get back, I'm going to find more people. We're going to find, uh, we're going to hear great, great testimonies. Amen. Started the new church by the grace of God. I got a new vehicle. 
Uh, oh, and, um, you know, the start of this year, it's something. I believe the Holy Spirit shows us things to come. Amen? And so the start of this year, uh, we had a New Year's Eve service, which we do every year at our church. But this year, the Lord put on my heart to do something different. He put on my heart to bring in the new year. We always have, you know, praise and worship and fellowship and food and everything. But this year, the Lord put on my heart to bring in the new year on our knees. I mean, 12 o'clock, we're, we're on our knees, you know. And the reason being because the Bible says that the Lord gives grace to the humble. And the Lord put on my heart before this new year started, uh, around about the middle of December, I just would spend time in prayer. And I just was telling my wife, I said, baby, I just perceive this is going to be a very difficult year. This is going to be a year of a lot of affliction, a lot of tribulation. Um, and, and, and I think as a church, we need to, 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 to receive this new year humbling ourselves and receiving the grace of God. And so we had a New Year's Eve service, but the entire church was on their knees. We prayed for probably about an hour, everybody on their knees. And um, then, we, you know, of course, had a, had a meal afterwards and, and had a good time. And for about the first three months while we're in Peru, it kind of seemed like things were going okay. You know, everything was kind of going okay for about the first three months. And, but I knew the Lord had spoken to us. And then about the, about the middle of March, it's like the bottom just fell out. I mean, it was like... Something just came unglued in the entire country. And there were floods throughout the entire country like we never had before. I'm talking about over 100,000 homes were destroyed. Literally, 100,000 homes. Not just homes, but buildings and infrastructure. They had over 400 bridges washed out in a month period. And it was just one thing after another. And they, they tried to explain it some some. Uh, a weather phenomenon that they call El, El Nino. It's a, it's, it's a current that goes from, from Antarctica up to the, through South America. But certain times you have the current switches, and it causes tremendous devastation. Well, this was 10 times what it usually is, 10 times worse. They, they, they couldn't understand it. And it was, it was devastating, man. Then after the floods, then you had a lot of people literally dying because they had a lot, of, a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of sickness, a lot of disease. Because the drinking water was polluted. In fact, in Lima, there were parts of Lima that were hit. I, thankfully, not where, where we live, but there were parts that were, that were closer to rivers and stuff. They were badly affected. But they had, can you imagine a city of 10 million people and there's no water? There's no water. They had no, because the drinking water, the reservoirs had been polluted. They couldn't, they couldn't process, they couldn't get the mud and the filth and the dead animals and, and stuff out of the water. And so the city had no water for a couple weeks and people were starting to go crazy, man. Go to a grocery store. Well, it's like here after a hurricane or, you know, if, 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 if there's going to be a hurricane or, or a snowstorm, you can't buy milk or bread. Well, imagine going into, uh, there's no water, and, you, and people start fighting over bottles of water. And then the water is outrageously priced if you could find it. It probably happened here too. I don't know. Um, but you know what? The, the atmosphere was tense. People were fearful. People were literally lining up for, for blocks and blocks and blocks with buckets trying to find water. Walking around the city trying to find water, it was pretty crazy. Um, but the Lord kept us. The Lord gave us peace. We were able to, 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 to share his peace with the people, peace with our congregation. And, uh, and the awesome thing is, uh, actually, I, I, I thank God my wife was not there during that time. The Lord had brought her to the States. She was ministering in a, in a conference in a couple churches up in New York. I thank God because she probably would have been a little bit stressed during that time, you know. Um, and about a month before all this happened, the Lord, the Lord prompted me in my spirit, we have a, a water tank on, our, on top of our house. It's like a storage tank. I had been out of commission for a while, and the Lord prompted me to fix it, repair it, which I did. And uh, thank God, because all this happened, we had water. We were actually able to share water with some of our neighbors. Thank God. Thank God. So uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you. He'll, he'll show you things. You might not understand it. I didn't know why I had to fix it. I was like, well, it's probably a good idea to do. I didn't know there wasn't going to be water for, for, for a while. And so we had a lot of people throughout the country were starting to get sick. The government tried to hush it down. They don't want anybody, you know, no, 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 it's not happening. But, but it was obvious it was happening. You know, you know how the government sometimes tries to tone things down, don't want people worrying and, you know, pandemonium. But it was getting pretty bad. And um, so the Lord began, actually, when, when it happened, it was like a flash. It just happened in a matter of a couple of weeks. So finally, when everybody's kind of, you know, I mean, we're believing God as a, as a, as a corporate body. We realize we have to do something. We can't do a lot. We can't, I mean, how do you, how do you help 100,000 homes that have been destroyed? I mean, but we can do something, you know? And so we began to pray, and uh, the Lord prompted us to, to take aid 
um, uh, water and, and food and clothes, particularly medicine, uh, up to one of these communities that had been devastated. It's about four hours north of Lima. Thank God we have our vehicle now, right? Four hours north of Lima, a town called Water, uh, Warme. And um, it was actually so bad in that, in, in that particular town that we couldn't get there for a couple weeks because they, they had to send in the, the army to keep people from ran, uh, ransacking the place. They, they were so desperate, they couldn't get food or water, and the water had risen up over the houses. So the people were desperate. They had to finally sent, sent some troops in there. When it was finally safe enough to go, we went. And um, our church members, I mean, like I said, they, they're like ants, right? And so we let them know, look, guys, I mean, we've been through a hard time here, but there's people that have been through a lot worse than us. And we need to do something. And we begin to in- encourage them, bring whatever contribution you can, bottled water, you know, food, clothes, medicine, toys for the kids. And uh, we wanted to also get rubber boots for the children because a lot of the kids were getting sick because of walking barefoot in this, this filth, you know, parasites and whatnot. Um, so we actually were able to, to reach, and y'all helped us. That was a blessing. I want to thank y'all. Y'all helped us reach over 300 families. That's what we could do. Now, we did what we could, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We reached at least 300 families, but actually a lot more than that, okay? Because when we finally got, we, and we worked with a couple of our churches in Peru, we got a, a truckload of water and supplies and, you know, uh, all this stuff. That truck was slam-packed, and then we had our vehicle slam-packed. We had uh, a couple other vehicles. We took our team of children's uh, helpers up there to do a, uh, a festival for the, for the, for the kids. Because all this stuff happens, kids don't really understand what's going on. And they're scared, and they, they, you know, they don't know what's happening. So we wanted to share God's love, but also you know, let, them, let them laugh. Let them be kids for a while. So we, we, we had a couple of our gals who, who uh, they have a gift for that. And so they put some music on, and they, and they began to dance, and, and they were dressed up in some costumes and dancing for the kids. We gave out candy. We gave out gifts to the kids. We had a clinic set up. We had one of our young ladies in the church who studied medicine, and so we had a, a free clinic where people could come and get medicines. And they had a lot of skin conditions, a lot of rashes and allergies and things from all the, I don't know, the dust and the toxins, a lot of, a lot of lung problems. We, and we had a, a, a lab donate a couple thousand dollars worth of medicine that we were able to go and just be a blessing. But listen, we went up there with the idea of going the same day, handing everything out, and coming back. Folks, I've seen miracles, okay? Um, I've seen a dead person raised to life. Little, I, I shared that testimony, okay? A uh, little girl in my, in my arms, the Lord brought her back. I've seen that. Listen, when we went there to, to, to take all this stuff, we had a lot of stuff. But when we started giving it out, the water and giving out the, the medicine, giving out the boots and giving out the, the, the bags of food, we, put, we got bags of hygiene items put together. We couldn't give it away. We couldn't get rid of it, man. We, we were giving it out. And it was like, what? We kept giving it out. We kept giving it out. It took us two days to get rid of all that stuff. I'm, God is good. It took us two days, and it really took two fully. We were worn slap out. We were like, my God, when are we going to finish? So we went to the neighborhood that we had, we had planned on going to, and let me tell you something. Can you imagine being in your home at midnight? You're sleeping in bed, and all of a sudden you hear a sound. It sounds like a freight train, something like a, this, 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 this rumbling, and, and you, hear, you feel something shaking. You're like, what in the world? And you wake up, and you have a, 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 a mudslide filling your house, but quickly it's filling your house with mud and rock and water i mean quickly you've got seconds to get on your roof that's what happened in this neighborhood within seconds this river busted through its banks because of tremendous rains that have been having throughout the entire country the river overflowed taking i mean it was literally boulders the size of semi trucks it was carrying through these cities man and aside from that, people's cars, and you have uh, uh, cows and pigs and everything else being dragged down the, down, down the path of this, of this landslide, of, of this mud. Starts filling up the houses, rip, rip through the walls. These are cinder block homes. Concrete rips through the walls like they're, like they're paper, just shreds them to pieces. And mud is stacked up to the ceiling in these houses. People were literally in their beds, and everything's gone, man. All their, everything, everything gone. 
in an instant. And they, you know, were able to survive. A lot of people get on, on their rooftops and stuff. When we finally got there, they were trying to dig out their kitchens, dig out their, their houses, dig out. And they were living in, in, in makeshift tents on their roofs. Just broken. These people, I mean, just weeping. When they, I mean, people that had lost everything. Older people, elderly, had lost everything. I, it was all we could do to not just break down and cry right there, which we did. But when we were able to share uh, just a little bag of, you know, a, a, a bag of hygiene items and some food, some medicine, man, that was them hearing the gospel. They were hearing God loves you. They were hearing you've been through a lot, but there's still a God who loves you, and you're going to get through this. I was able to give a little, a little stove, um, a little gas stove, a little two, two burner gas stove to this old lady that had lost everything. And when I gave her that, I said, you know, the, somebody had blessed us with it to give away. I put it in her hand. I said, this is for you to let you know that God loves you. She began to bawl like a baby. This lady said, you have no idea what I lost. I lost everything. I mean, she just began to weep and weep and weep. So, listen, those 300 homes were the most devastated. My wife, we, we were literally walking in mud up to our knees. My wife about fell down. and I mean, it was, it was a mess. It was a mess to see these people living like that. But you know what? God is good. God is faithful. Because God used you, God used you to provide a miracle for them. Y'all gave a significant amount. I mean, we, 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 we sent emails. We got our church involved, but then we said, look, this is, bigger than, this is bigger than us. We need help. And we began reaching out. And you were one of the churches that did connect with us. So thank you. Because like I said, we were blown away. We could not give this stuff out. It just kept, we're like, what in the world? It doesn't make any sense. We went house to house, house to house, carrying bags and bags and bottles of water and, I mean, boots for the kids and toys for the kids. And it just kept going. I'm like, what in the world? And by the end of the second day, when we got to about 5, 5.30 or so in the evening, we were like, we can't do no more. We were worn out. And it's like, then the oil ceased. And we finally were able to give it all out. We're like, let's go home. <laughs> Man, we've seen the hand of God. Amen. Amen. And I wish we could show a video. I have that on video. I, I wish we could, but for some odd reason, they, they, they couldn't show it. So um, perhaps I'll, I'll, I, I can send it to y'all maybe. And when you do get it, some of the technicalities worked out, it would be great for y'all to watch that. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get that information. Yeah, okay. Um, before I get going, I want to share the word this morning, because if it's not for the word, why are we here, right? <laughs> Amen. But um, I want to I share with y'all, we have our prayer cards back there uh, on that table. It's got a nice picture of my wife, a going, going with my son, and uh, an okay picture of me, okay? Um, but I've got a beautiful wife, and my son's bigger. He's, he's older now. This picture's a couple years old, but it's back there has our information on there, so y'all please pray for us. Look at our website. The video is on our website, by the way, so you can go there and see it on our website. Um, if you'd like to support our ministry, there's the information back there. And that table back there, y'all, uh, is set up where you guys can try some candy from Peru. We've got a couple um, uh, souvenirs and whatnot, some, some, some magnets for your fridge, some bracelets or some bookmarkers. Uh, there's a couple pins. All that's free. There's no, there's no, no, no cost for it. But I do ask that if you would take something from there, you're welcome to it. Please leave a, any size contribution. That helps out with our travel expenses because it's not very cheap to get from Peru to here. And driving around, you know, as, as, as we're here, that's definitely going to be a blessing. Help us. And any offerings that we receive always go towards the work that we're doing in Peru. Amen? So we, we really try to uh, offset our costs that way. So please prayerfully uh, enjoy the candy. There's some chocolate, too, if anybody likes chocolate. It's all for you, but please leave, you know, a little love offering, $100, 20 30 50 whatever, <laughs> all right? <laughs> whatever God puts in your heart, 5 10 whatever God puts in your heart. Amen? Over the past couple weeks, um, with all the events that have been taking place, you know, we can focus on all the things that are, that, that are happening, you know, floods and earthquakes and uh, hurricanes and, you know, wars and rumors of wars, you know, uh, all these things. And, and it seems to be pointing to uh, uh, signs that are, that, that are in the Word, okay? Um, 
I think it's clear that we're in the last days. I think that's pretty obvious. I mean, you'd have to be blind to not realize we're in the last day. The last of the last, because since Pentecost, we've been in the last days. But the last of the last. This morning, the Lord wants to share with this body, I believe, a word just to encourage you, uh, just to strengthen you, but as it pertains to the last days. The title of my message is Having Patience in the Last Days. Having Patience in the Last Days. And that's the key. That's, that's just, this is one of the keys that we find in the Word of God to maintaining a victorious walk in the last days. Having patience in the last days. Now I'm going to start out, um, I want us to go to Romans chapter 2. And um, look at verse number 7 here. Having patience in the last days. Praise the Lord. We're talking about patience, so all of our points are going to uh, likewise begin with the, with the same letter as patience. They're all going to begin with the letter P. Just to kind of make it a little bit easier. All right. Romans 2, 7. And um, the Amplified, obviously, which is there, the Amplified. I was going to read from the, the King James, but that's fine. We'll read the, the Amplified. It says, To those who by patient persistence and well-doing seek glory and honor, immortality, he will give eternal life. Amen. The King James says, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Patient continuance. We're talking about having patience in the last days. Let's also jump over to Hebrews chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 6, verse 12. There's a lot of things we could focus on in these, in these last days. But I believe if we'll focus on some of the key principles of God's Word, we're going to be okay. Amen? I don't think we should ignore the things that are happening. But that shouldn't be our focus. Our focus should be to follow God with all of our hearts. Hebrews 6.12 says that you be not slothful or lazy. God don't like people being lazy now, okay? Be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Listen, guys, this thing about patience is key if we want to live a victorious life in the last days. Amen? It's key. Patience carries with it a, a sense of endurance, bearing up under pressure, and being constant. The word patience, or being patient, uh, doesn't necessarily mean only, I'm just waiting on God. Right. You know, because we can talk about, well, I'm patient, I'm waiting for him to come, I'm being patient for his return, I'm just waiting. No, it doesn't mean we're just waiting. It's what you're doing while you're waiting. Right. Amen. Amen. It's got a lot more to do with what you're doing while you're waiting than just waiting. Okay? Uh, in Peru, we have a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of red tape to get anything done. You got to wait in line. Kind of going to the DMV or something like that, you know, but a lot more. So to get anything done, you have to wait in a line. You can be waiting and not be patient. Did you know that? You can be there just, just taking too long. Hurry it up. I mean, you're, you're waiting, but you're not being patient. The Bible talks about if you want to inherit the promises of God, we should have faith and patience. It's not enough to have faith in the last days. We have to have a patience that upholds our faith, that gives stability and strength to our stamina, endurance to our faith, because our faith is going to be tried. And let me tell you, folks, when the Lord put in our hearts the start of this year that it was going to be a year of tribulation and affliction, it appeared that it wasn't for a couple months, and then bam, bam, bam. I mean, talking about one thing after another, not just in Peru. I mean, look, one hurricane, another hurricane. And folks, are, I've seen folks on Facebook, I, I'm tired of this mess. Because it's that endurance factor. We got to endure, man, because there's greater things on the way. 
There's worse things down the road. The Bible talks about the patience of the saints. Jesus said, by your patience possess ye your souls. Patience is that consistency that, in, that, that holds up under pressure. In other words, be what may, come what may, I'm going to continue what I'm doing with God. I'm going to continue the walk, continue the talk. I'm going to see this thing through to the end. The Bible says we're to run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. We can't get off, off track looking at all these things taking place and allowing the devil to bring division and discouragement. You know that's so easy to do nowadays? Because people are so, what's the word? Sensitive, uh, uh, offendable. And if you pay that much attention to things on the, on the media, you'll assume, you'll come to the assumption that, good Lord, the, the whole country's a mess. We're all divided. Everybody's against everybody. Well, that might be in the natural. But we belong to a supernatural kingdom. Yeah. We're supernatural people. Yeah. We're one in the spirit. We have to maintain that unity. But to do that, we have to endure. We have to have patience. And today, I want to talk about four areas in the four hours I have left. All right. I want to talk about four areas that we need to have patience in in these last days. In other words, four areas that we need to endure in, four areas of our Christian walk that we need to be constant in if we're to make it in these last days. Praise the Lord. And the first area that we need to be constant and have patience in is in our prayer life. We need to be patient in prayer. We can go to Luke 18 verse 1. And we see here in Luke 18, in verse number 1, the Lord gives us a, a parable that lets us know how important it is to be persistent, enduring, and patient in prayer. It says, He spake a parable unto them to this end that men. That includes women as well. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, how many of you know you can pray for something, but you don't always see the manifestation immediately? I mean, there's sometimes a period of time between the amen and there it is. Amen. You believe in God for a job. You're doing all you can do, but you've been praying. Still looking for a job. You're single, been single for a while. You're like, come on, God, I need to get married now. When is that brother going to come find me? Because the women, all, you know, women always want to get found. And the men say, Lord, I'm looking. Where's she at? You know? Want my helper. And the lady's saying, somebody come rescue me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but that, that's, that shouldn't be that way. Your idea shouldn't be somebody rescue you. It should be, Lord, who can I help? Because if, if, it's, if it's all about you, it's already, it's already out of order. You know what I'm saying? So that could be why you're still single. But let's not go there right now. Let's not go there right now. All right? But there's sometimes a, there's, a, there's a testing period or a tribulation period or a time which we must endure while we're praying. And the Lord here gives us the example of a widow woman who goes to a judge and she's going there every day, you know, get justice for me for my adversary. She's bleeding justice. And the guy's like, ah, whatever, you know. What's you, ah. But after a while, he's like, man, it's that widow again? Oh, man, she's getting on my nerves. What do you want anyhow? So he finally grants her her request. But then the Lord said, shall not God much more answer those who cry out to him day and night we should be praying daily day and night crying out to our god maybe you didn't see the answer but we thank god we keep praying we keep believing we keep on persisting patiently enduring in prayer we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood that's why things don't always change like they should or when you think they should but keep on praying in these last days, prayer is vital. Folks, I've been in the mission field for 15 years almost in Peru, and if we're not for prayer, I, we wouldn't be there now. 
We're not for prayer. We wouldn't have a new vehicle, a new church. We're not for prayer. My son wouldn't even be alive. That's the truth. My wife almost lost him when she was pregnant twice. And it was a daily battle of prayer. That's not to say if someone's lost a baby, they failed in prayer. And I'm not saying that. Things happen. We don't always know why. But we can recover. We can get up. We can, we can go on with God. We learn to be patient. The Bible talks about the patience of Job. You know, I've heard scholars say that Job's testing and trials lasted about a year, maybe 18 months. That was a lot to happen 18 months, man. Lost his business, lost his children, lost his health, lost his money. But he didn't lose his faith. He was patient. He was consistent. And he kept praying. Praise the Lord. So the Lord tells us to keep on praying. Praise God. We can jump over to 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Just write that verse down. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, which says that we should, uh, 5, 16 and 17, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, I believe is the next part. And all things give thanks. Here we go. 5, 17 is what it was. Pray without ceasing. Well, praise the Lord. How many of y'all love the Lord? The second area that we need to have patience in in these last days is in our practice. Now, when I talk about practice, what I'm talking about is, are we practicing the Word? Are we doing the Word? One thing is to hear the Word. Man, nowadays we've got so access to so many archives of the greatest orders, the greatest preachers and teachers that have probably ever lived. And you can just listen to whatever flavor suits you. Seriously. If you like more of a laid-back style, you can find that. If you like more of a user-friendly, you can find that. If you like more, you know, uh, exp- expository preaching, you can find that. Black, white, I mean, you can, you know, there's a, there's a style for everybody. But it's not about how much word you're hearing these last days. It's about how much word you're practicing these last days. How much of the word are we putting into practice? James 1.22, what does that verse tell us? James 1, 22. But be ye doers, or we can say practicers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Praise God. The Lord wants us to put his word into practice. Folks, when we begin to pray, and then we begin to put the word into practice, something's going to change. There is no way. Listen now. I've counseled a lot of people throughout the years as a pastor. There is no way things won't get better in your family, in your marriage, if, you don't put, if, you, if you're not putting the Word of God in practice. Or if you are putting the Word of God in practice, uh, better yet. There's no way things won't change if you're putting the Word of God in practice. I counseled a brother who for years has had issues with his wife. Now, first of all, anytime he would talk to him, it's always her fault. So I know something's not right there. Okay? Because it can't be. In all these years, she's the only one that's got issues. All right? Anyhow. And so I would counsel the guy. I'm like, look, brother. There's no, look, the Bible says overcome evil with good. Buy her some chocolates. Take her some flowers. Write her a letter. Tell her you love her. Are you telling her that, that you love her? She don't want to hear it. Oh, Put the word into practice. I've seen it change lives. Our young preacher, John, he's actually part of our pastoral team now. We have him kind of there that, you know, we have a a team of people that we confide in that that have a lot of of more responsibility. Well, Well, I've seen the word work in John's life. I've seen it change his dad who was a drunk. You, You can't tell me this word doesn't work. But this brother has not yet put the word into practice. Guess what? He's still got problems with his wife. We're always going to have some problems with with the opposite sex. The word says such will have difficulty in the flesh. 
But we overcome a lot when we put the word of God into practice. How many of y'all can say amen? amen? So we're talking about what we do, how we're living. And it, along these lines of our practice, in other words, doing the word, we also, also should, should mention our practical serving. One thing is putting the word of God into practice. Another thing is our serving. Are we serving in a practical way within the body of Christ? Let's go to 1 Corinthians, 5, um, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Talking about our practical service. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Everybody say steadfast. That's patient, y'all. That's patient, okay? Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In these last days, a lot of things are getting shaken up. A lot of things are going to be shaken. But it's not time to abandon ship. It's not time to stop serving. We need to serve God in practical ways. We need to keep serving God. Listen, y'all, you ladies that are preparing the meals, keep on making those chews and, those, and, the, and, and that banana pudding. We need that. Keep on serving God with the children. Keep on serving God with the Sunday school. Keep on taking the word of God wherever you go. Serve in a practical way. Take your wife a cup of coffee. Don't put any poison in it. I mean, what practical way are you serving? The Bible says your labor is not in vain. We need to change our attitude. I'm getting tired of this. Nobody recognizes me. Your labor is not in vain. Your practical service is not in vain. I'm not talking about this spiritual stuff that we do. I'm not talking about all this, all this flaky stuff. I'm talking about practical service. It goes along with practicing the Word, obviously. But on a practical way, how, is this, how can we put this into practice? How, how is this practical? If you get a revelation that's not too practical, what good is it? And nowadays, there's a lot of deep revelations, man. But how is it practical? I mean, if, if we can't put it into practice, if it's not practical, if it doesn't make much sense, dear God, help us, Lord. Amen. We need to be patient in our prayer life. That's pretty straightforward. We need to be patient in our practice and our practical service along those lines. The third area we need to be patient in, number three, is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's go there really quick. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Thank you for your word, Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse number 2. What does that verse tell us? It says, preach what now? The word. We need to be patient, constant. Number three is our preaching. In our preaching. Hey, listen now, it's getting ready to get good, y'all. We need to be constant and consistent in our preaching. Preach the word, it says. Be instant in season, out of season. That means when it's popular and when it's not popular. When it's easy and when it's hard. When it's hot and when it's cold. When they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. We don't always have the most popular voice or the most popular message. Actually, this term, instant in season and out of season, kind of is like a fashion term, you know. Last year's dress is not really in season now, but you know what? Uh, it still works. The gospel isn't always what they want to hear. It's not very popular at times, but it's what's needful. This word never changes. This word works. This word will bear up under all, glory to God, all trials, all tribulations. And if we build our spiritual house, our spiritual lives upon this rock, 
When the test and the temptation and trials of life come, we're going to stand. In these last days, things are getting ready to transpire that are going to shake the nations. Let me ask you a question. What would happen if some crazy man did explode an atomic bomb somewhere? Where would your faith be? Would you keep on praising him? Would you keep on trusting him? If the stock market just fell out, if there was war declared, what would you do? Listen now, what should we do? What we've always been doing. We keep on praying, glory to God. We keep on practicing the word. We keep on preaching because we know that he's coming soon. And if we preach the word, he'll confirm it. Glory to God. We'll see signs. We'll see wonders. We'll see the dead raised. Come on, brother. We'll see, oh my God, the hand of God move because we dare to step out and believe him. But to preach it, you've got to believe. You better believe it. Come on, somebody. If you're going to preach this word, you better believe this word because this word will be tested. Woo, come on, somebody. Oh, God. And the devil's going to make sure that <laughs> he's going to make sure that he finds out if you, if you believe it or not. But when you know who, in whom you have believed, you know he's able to keep what you've committed. My God. It's like Jeremiah said, there's a fire shove in my bones. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching when it's easy and when it's hard. I'm going to keep sharing this gospel until the day I die. Come on, somebody. Woo! Because it's the power, the gospel is the power of God. This is what changes lives. Not philosophy, not your opinion. It's the gospel. So we need to be patient, consistent, enduring in our preaching. Praise the Lord Jesus. And the word preaching, what is, what is, what is preaching? Because if, we, if we're too spiritual about it, it's, it's not very practical. If we think preaching means standing behind a pulpit or on a street corner with your Bible, waving your arms and shouting, and I mean, if you think that's preaching, you're going to lose a lot of people. Because most folks see that as a fanatic. Oh, mm -mm. And they'll avoid a fanatic. But the Bible says we are all ministers of reconciliation. Yeah. You're called to be a preacher on your job. Yeah. Now don't tell your boss he's going to hell because he might not like that. <laughs> we have to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. You know what I'm saying? Pray for him, and when you have the opportunity to share the word, slide it in there. Because it's a sword, sharper than two edged sword. So it's going to cut going in, cut coming out. Just kind of slide it on in. And the Lord will give you opportunity to share. And preaching simply means sharing the word. Obviously, you got to live the word too now. Come on, somebody. No, there's no good, there's no sense in preaching if you're not going to live it. But the word preaching means proclaiming. And thank God. Some of us are not very articulate. Listen, I'm, I know. If it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, there's no way I could even preach the gospel. Let alone in Spanish, man. I went to Peru not speaking Spanish at all. But I was determined. I believed. I was praying. I believed God. And I said, Lord, I, I just, I, I asked and I received by faith. Within six months, I was preaching the gospel. But I'm not speaking Spanish because it's something I want to do. Because he called me to. But everywhere we go, we're all called to preach. We're all called. Listen, I heard the story of one lady. She wasn't much of a a preacher per se. I mean, you, you never would see her behind a pulpit. But you know what her pulpit was? The kitchen. Her stove. She could bake a mean pie, man. And she was anointed to make them pies. And she would make her pies and take them. She lived in a high-rise building in a, in, a, in, a, in a big city. And she'd take her pies door to door to her neighbors. Knock on the door. Neighbor, how you doing? Got something for you. Just wanted to tell you that. God loves you. Not too many people are going to turn, turn down a homemade pie now, you know. But the thing was, she wasn't really making a pie. She had a plan. And her purpose, her, her, her plan was she would make it in a nice pie dish. You know, the, the, the nice ones that you, have to, that you have to wash or anything, not the throwaway tin ones, the, the, the nice ones. Because her idea was to go back in a couple days to pick up her pie pan. But of course... By that time, the people had already eaten the pie. So she knew they weren't going to tell her no when she wanted to talk to them. And since they already ate the pie, 
they're a little bit obligated to listen. And she went with that idea of sharing Christ. That was how she preached. And she won many souls to the kingdom. Baking pies and proclaiming the gospel. Some of y'all are anointed to do things online. Listen, what has God put in your hand is what I'm talking about. We have the mediums, the, the outlets nowadays that anybody can be a preacher. Maybe you're an artsy person. Maybe you, you're, a, you're able to draw or paint. Well, do it for the glory of God. Pray, Lord, help me proclaim Christ with what I'm doing. Use Facebook, Twitter, not to further the media's agenda of division. Because there's not just two views on everything, folks. They make it like, well, what side are you on? Are you on this side or are you on that side? Well, I'm on his side. Where's that fit in? Amen. It's not a black side or white side. It's not a Republican side, Democrat side. In the natural it is, but I'm part of the kingdom of God. Listen, you might be a full-fledged Democrat. I love you. You're a Trump supporter. I love you. I want you to come to Christ. For those of you that are wondering, I'm neither, so anyhow. I'm all about Jesus, y'all. What difference does it make who you vote for? <laughs> when it's all said and done, thank God we don't have to vote for, for who's king. Amen. Amen. Heaven, earth, heaven and earth may pass away, but my world never pass away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Whew, thank God. So we're proclaiming. But let me tell you something, folks. The word proclaim means, God Almighty. Preaching is proclaiming, using the, the gifts and talents you have to talk about Christ, to share Christ, to just witness as you're able to. Don't try to force your way in. Just do it with the grace God gives you. Amen. When he presents an opportunity, take a step of faith and share Christ. Now, if you've, if you've missed it, if, you've, if he's prompted you to share the gospel to proclaim and you've not done it, I know you feel guilty about it. Ask him to forgive you and keep on. Learn from that. Amen. Amen. Don't wallow in the past. Don't, let, don't beat yourself over the head. But listen now, proclaiming in these last days is vital. Not just proclaiming Christ, but also proclaiming the word what are you saying consistently? Because there's life and death, death and life in your tongue. Your words have power. What are you proclaiming over your family? What are you proclaiming over your children? You watch the news. Are you proclaiming what they say? Oh, my God. Whose report shall you believe? Come on, somebody. The Bible says... Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are you saying? Hold on now. Hold on now. It's not what are you saying every now and again. It's not what are you saying Sunday at church. It's what are you saying over and over and over and over that has the power, the consistent power to change lives. You want to see God show up in your family? Keep preaching. Keep proclaiming. Keep confessing the word. You don't see any changes? Just keep on at it. Just keep on at it. Just keep on at it. Let me tell you something, folks. This is very much like a person that needs to lose weight. And they decide, first of all, no more pies, okay? But uh, aside from that, they decide, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to get on a diet. I'm going to do a diet. I'm going to, do, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to work out. And so they join a gym. Buy some fancy gym shoes and some, you know, some gym clothes. They join a gym. And, I mean, they're just, they, they're all psyched up. And they go for a couple times, uh, you know, two or three days. Something happens, you know, they can't, can't make it one day, can't make it the next day. Week goes by, month goes by, year goes by, and they hadn't gone back to the gym question did they lose any weight probably not but they can say but pastor i joined the gym i i even have gym shoes i i i i've i've worked out well but you didn't do it consistently and you're still eating your big macs drinking your diet coke and your supersized fries you're not losing no weight the very same thing happens when you confess the word once or twice by his stripes, I'm healed. But the next day, oh, my God, I can't believe I, oh, 
I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Y'all just pray for me. Our prayers will do you no good. I'm believing God for this or for that. But then what do you, 17 through 19. I like having that up there. You can kind of read it. You don't have to turn, turn your back on the audience. That's kind of nice. I like that. It says here, although the fig tree, look now, shall not blossom. Neither fruit in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat or no food. The flocks shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Yet, come on somebody, say yet, yet. Yeah. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Keep on, number 19. The Lord God is my strength. And he'll make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me walk upon my high places. Amen. Verse number 17 is key right there, or 18. It says, yet will I rejoice. Folks, the fourth thing we need to be patient in is our praise. The fourth thing we need to be consistent in is our praise. The Word of God tells us to rejoice always. And here it says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And it's talking about a time of devastation. There is nothing going right. The fields aren't producing. There's no, there's no, vi there's no grapes on the vine. The fig tree's done withered up. Nothing's working right. The economy's bottomed out. There's disasters everywhere. It looks like gloom and doom. The end is nigh. But folks, my God, we know the end is nigh. That's why we can look up. That's why we can praise him. The Bible says that weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I know it looks bad right now, honey. I know it looks like it's the end of the world. But let me tell you something. Oh, my God, your time of joy is on its way. You might see what you don't want to see. And you might have to endure what you don't want to endure. But there's a light at the other end. Whew. God's going to see you through it. No matter how hard things get, no matter how difficult things get, my God, no matter how dark the night or how fierce the storm, we can raise our hand and say, God, I give you praise. I might not understand it. I might not like it, but I'm going to praise you anyways, God. My God, that is a voice of faith. And that's a song, that's a sound that needs to be heard. What a greater testimony when you're going through to the folks that are all around you they don't hear you complaining. You're not blaming everybody else. You just say, God, I praise you. I praise you. And at the same time, I praise you, Lord, and I forgive anybody else that's caused this mess. I forgive them, Lord. I'm not going to hold all in my heart. I forgive. And do it consistently. It's nothing that the flesh wants to do. Look, there's, there's times when, I mean, we're in the middle of a battle. It's all I can do to raise one hand. But to raise two hands? No. Raise it anyway. And make yourself praise God. I don't want to. Open your mouth. I don't want to. I know you don't. That's why you need, that's why you need to. The flesh is, hold on now. The Lord said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You got to pull your own. You got to crucify your own flesh. I praise you, God. Sometimes you start out in the flesh, but wind up in the spirit. <laughs> you know, I don't want to. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Oh, I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Man, I remember when our vehicle broke down more than once. And I'm pushing that thing. It was old and weighed a ton because they used thick metal back then, man. And I'm pushing that thing down the road. And I've got sweat coming down my face. And it's hot. And people are honking their horn. And they think I'm crazy. And it's a, my wife and son are in the car. Now imagine how that feels to a, a husband and a father and a faith preacher. I mean, I'm believing God. <laughs> and I got home, man, and I threw myself on the floor. I went to our church and threw myself on the floor and just began to cry and say, God, I came with my family in a decent car. And I'm preaching your word. <laughs> oh, but I praise you. And I begin to praise him and thank him. 
and just pour my heart out. Let me tell you something, folks. God is faithful. We got through that praising him. We got through it praising him. And my wife said when it was all said and done, you sure you don't want to fix that old car? I'm like, no, we're not going to resurrect that thing. No. No, 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 no. We sold it for basically scrap. And I was so happy when they come and got it. I said, y'all have fun. (laughs) God came through, folks. So the fourth thing we need to be patient in is our praise. Now, I know there's a lot more keys to victory, but these four things, I believe, are vital. We're going to believe God, and we're going to be patient. We're going to be consistent. We're going to, glory to God, be consistent in these four things. And I believe if we will consistently apply these principles, things will change. God will be glorified. And next time I come, you'll be sharing some testimonies with me. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all so much. May the Lord bless you. Now, if anybody would like prayer, if anybody wants to, uh, would like this missionary to pray for you, come on down. We can wrap things up right now. In fact, why don't we pray? And then if you want prayer, come on down, and we'll just call that a day. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give praise to you this morning, this afternoon. We just thank you for the time, to, the opportunity to preach your word. Father, I thank you for all the things you've done in our lives. I thank you for the the mighty things you've done and are doing, Father, in Peru. I thank you, Father, that you've planted us there. You're performing your word there, Father. And we just give you the praise for it right now. Thank you for this church and this, this wonderful group of men and women, this body that is doing the word, Lord. I know that through them you're reaching souls. Through them lives are being changed. I ask you to open doors no man can close and use each of them, Lord, to proclaim your word. May this message that was shared today, Father, impact their lives. And may you be glorified, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, if there's any sick among you, the Word of God says, let them call the elders of the church and let them pray over them. If you're sick, here we are to pray. If you like encouragement, I'm here to pray for you. If you want to speak afterwards, I'm here to talk to you. Amen? Anybody want prayer? Everybody good? Y'all hungry now? I want some chicken. Okay, all right. Praise the Lord. I do too. Pastor Bob, thank you so much.